Good morning, welcome back. So today I'm gonna to get stuck into the tray. Uh, I've already got some steel gathered uh, and I'm just going through the process of seeing sort of what size tray, what sort of style. I'm gonna be keeping it very simple with this tray build. Uh, just gonna be a rectangle, nothing fancy, no fancy angles or anything like that. I have decided though uh, to go with a timber uh, bed instead of steel. And it's just a combination of a, I like the look of the, the oiled timber and just give it a little bit of aesthetics while still keeping it practical. So that's the plan for today. We'll hopefully get the basic outline of the tray done, the basic frame. Uh, probably won't get started on the headboard today or this this swing even, we'll see how we go. I haven't got uh, too many days left before I have to go back to work. The bull bar, I'm not happy with how that's come out, the paint job on that. I just used the uh, VHT, I think it was, uh, roll bar and chassis black spray cans, and I'm not happy with the quality of finish. Probably just needs a couple more coats and it would look better, but I've decided to bite the bullet and I've bought a Raptor bed lining kit and invested in a big air compressor and, and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna spray the bull bar with black Raptor coat or Raptor bed liner and see how I like that. Um, I've got to start on the rock sliders too. We'll probably make a start on those. And then they'll be getting Raptor coated and the tray frame headboard, basically all the steel on the tray will be getting Raptor coated black and then we'll have uh, I think it's called Marabou or Marabou, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but it's just a, a timber hardwood decking that you get from Bunnings, it comes pre-oiled and that'll be on the, on the bed. So I think with that sort of dark oiled hardwood timber and the, and the wrap coat black and the red of the cab will look quite nice. We'll see. I have had some parts arrive um, not all the parts that I've ordered, I'm still waiting on some, but I've got the indicators for the bull bars. They have arrived. I've got license plate lights have arrived. I'm still waiting on the clips for this grill. They're coming from Thailand, so they're probably gonna take a while. The brand new side mirrors have arrived. They look awesome. And I think that's so clips I think might be all I'm waiting for. Oh no, the corner lamps. Still waiting on the corner lamps, so I believe the grill's the last thing to go on once everything else is, is on. Um, but I might, well actually I'll put the bull bar on last. I think it'll be easier to get the grill on with the bull bar off. So once the corner lamps arrive and the clips arrive, we can sort of reassemble the front end of the Hilux and then throw the bull bar back on. By then the bull bar will be painted Raptor, Raptor black, so that should work out well. But I don't think those parts are going to arrive this break. Um, I'm not sure where the corner lamp's coming from, but yeah, the, the clip's coming from Thailand. That's gonna take a while to get here. So anyway, I'll show you where I'm at with the tray. Uh, I've already been sort of laying out, measuring, and I've, I've come up with the dimensions. So I know what dimensions I want and how it's gonna to go together. Uh, I've already made one cut or a couple of cuts and only because I wanted to test out my new saw. I've put the abrasive cutoff saw under the bench and I've invested in a metal cold cut saw. So, and it's brilliant. Um, it's loud and it makes a ton of mess, but it cuts fantastic. I'm really happy with it. I'm glad I made that investment. So. Anyway, I'll take you for a look and see where we're up to. All right, so don't take any notice of these sections of 50 by 50 and these two uh, 75 by 50s. They are literally just there to give me a level surface to work on while I was working out what sort of, you know, what height I want the tray, what width, what length, all that sort of stuff. So that's just there to hold everything up. Um, it's gonna have nothing to do with how it looks at the end. So this is the piece that I've already cut and that is going to be the width of the tray. So outside to outside, 1720. 
that's wider than I would normally make a tray for one of these Hiluxes, uh, just because I like them sort of fitting a bit snugger to the cab. This one at 1720, it should end up pretty much level with those front fender flares. And the reason I've done that is just because the things that I have to work with, I'm, I'm using the mud guards off the old aluminium tray instead of buying new mud guards. If I was going to sort of spend more money on this tray and make it a bit fancier, I suppose, a bit more aesthetic, I'd probably invest in some um, Dun and Watson or similar mud guards. And in that case, I would make the tray a little bit narrower and I'd have the mud guards uh, stick out that little bit. But these mud guards are actually gonna sit under the tray, I think. Uh, and it just allows also in the future, if I or someone else who owns this vehicle decides to put some flares on the front, there's then room to bring the mud guards out or put some better mud guards on that stick out and i'm just just sort of trying to think ahead trying to think what might be done to this vehicle or what what things people might want to do in the future i mean if you do an engine transplant and want to run 33s or 35s you're going to have to put flares on the front if i was going to put flares on the front i'd be putting something along the lines of bushwhacker or cut snake style flares i don't think cut snake do any for this model hilux though they should but I think they start at the LN106. Um, but I think Bushwhacker maybe do uh, a set for this car. But anyway, we'll get started on this tray and uh, see if we can at least get the frame, the basic bed frame put together. And then we'll start working on the mounts. For the mounts, I'm also gonna keep it simple. I'm just gonna run a length of angle uh, full length pretty much or close to full length underneath front to back on each side and then I'm going to use uh, lengths of angle with some flat bar I've got some six mil or 50 by six flat bar and I've got some uh, 50 by 50 angle that I'm going to use as the the tray mounts weld some flat bar on the bottom angle up and then weld that to the angle that's running along and you'll see anyway, you'll see what I mean once we get to that, once we get to that part. And um, if once we do that, I'd, I'm not happy with it, I, I feel like there's not enough strength in it, I can uh, use the flat bar to, to gusset it, strengthen it up, maybe weld a uh, flat bar onto the, to the angle to turn it into like more of a C-channel than angle or yeah, there's, there's plenty of options anyway. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But that's where we're at at the moment. I'm going to, today I'm probably gonna measure and cut the rock sliders and start getting some bits and pieces ready for that. I need to go see someone in Perth about getting some uh, heavy duty U-bolts made up because I am gonna mount it with U-bolts over the chassis. I'm not welding to the chassis and yeah, we'll get the frame of the tray cut up and tacked together today. That's the plan. All right, let's get into it.
right, so that's the four outer sections of the tray cut. We'll get them cleaned up and start tacking them together. Try and get them as square as we can. Well, not as square as we can, we're gonna get them square. All right, let's get into it. So that's those four pieces cleaned up. Now we're going to work on getting them square and tacked together. I'm going to use a combination of squares. Uh, I don't have a big two foot square, unfortunately, anymore. I'm going to have to add that to the list of tools that I need to reacquire. But I've got a couple of set squares and I have got some uh, 45 magnets, corner magnets. So we'll use these to set up and then to actually check our square, we'll be using diagonal measurements with the tape. It's the best way I've found to make sure you are 100% square. this side because I haven't got anything to sit uh, that last piece on I'm going to cut a couple of sections of flat bar and then just clamp it you'll see
need to invest in a heap more clamps too. I've got, I think, two of these, two bigger ones. I only got two F clamps. I need a lot more F clamps. I find them a lot easier to use than these G clamps or C clamps, whatever you want to call them. All right. Tight. Nope. Yes, time for some new clamps. I'm looking forward to slowly building back up my tools, especially my boiler making and fabrication tools. Been out of the game for so long, I sort of just sold them or didn't maintain them properly. And well, I'm very, very excited actually, very keen to get back into fabrication, especially four wheel drive stuff. So time to start building up the shed, getting all the tools that we need. I'm really keen to get a bender and a notcher, tube bender, bender and tube notcher, so I can start doing some some bar work. I think that would be awesome. All right, there's our piece. Right, so even though that corner was tacked, because I tacked it on the outside, it's easy to open out. It's only gonna go in so far, and then the tack's gonna stop it. If you need it to bend in, tack it on the inside. So if we, if we do our measurements and we find that we do need to, to bend it in to get where we want it to be, we tack on the inside and then cut the outside tack, and that'll allow us to open the outside close the inside and vice versa if you need if you've tacked the inside and you need to open it up you've got to tack the outside then cut the inside tack and you can open it but we'll check that but I did make a rookie mistake like I said I've been out of the game for a long time and there's little tips and tricks that you pick up over the years boiler making and fabricating and it's just as easy to forget them when you've been out of the game and I have put this tack right on the corner that I'm going to be measuring. See that? I'm gonna to wanna to put my tape measure on that big dog ugly tack. And that's not gonna work. So immediately once I did it, I realized what I've done. So you see with this tack, I've gone down from the top a bit so I can get my tape on that corner for our diagonal measurements, which are gonna be the crucial measurement. That's our, that's our defining measurement, what we're going off for squareness. So I need to put another tack down here and grind that one flat. But we'll get some tacks on this other side first. Get our magnets. Also not going to be able to use my square where I've put these clamps, but I didn't really have much choice. I could probably could have used the bigger clamps, which would have given me a bigger opening. Again, all these things you forget. You gotta, you gotta learn how to fabricate again when you've been out of it for, well, for me, it's been probably two decades now, I reckon. 
20 years. Oh, maybe not 20 years. A good 15 years though. Yeah. Anyway, I'll actually I'll grind this. Oh, I'll retack that, grind that one off. Right, so seeing as though I can't get my square on those corners, we'll do the diagonal measurement. Am I going to be able to get that? See, again, I'm putting I'm putting clamps in my way all the time. And it's something, it's it's a skill that you learn and forget is to just set up knowing what you need to do next and not putting things in the way of that which I am doing flat out at the moment so basically just need to turn this clamp around and that'll give me room to run the tape for the diagonal like that let's see what we've got I'm going to call that 26, 96, 26, 96. Twenty six ninety. Eight. We we'll literally need to move. This is the long corner, and it's only a mil. It's got a. We're two mil out, so we just got to move it one mil because that'll do one mil either end. So I'm just going to give it a tap, the slightest tap on this corner in that direction to try and close this gap from 2698 to 2697 which should then open that gap or that diagonal from 2696 to 2697 we'll see how we go one little tap see if that did anything Yep, 2697. 2697. This frame is perfectly square. So now I'm going to get a few more tacks on it. Staying away from the tops of the corners so I can keep measuring my diagonals and we're going to as we tack we're going to keep checking because the tacks are going to move things so we'll get a few tacks in and then see how we look after that That's 2697, and I reckon the other one's between 97 and 98, so I reckon there's half a mil in it across that whole diagonal, which is square. Right, it's not millimetre perfect, but it's to the half mil, which 
most fabrication shops, most boiler making shops, like your big commercial shops, will accept plus or minus two mil. I've never accepted that. I, I think two mil is too much. One mil, I'll accept. One mil and under. But there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to get it millimetre perfect. But <clears throat> when you're looking at it, because there's discrepancies in the, the cuts and how you've ground them, like I, I believe that's perfectly square to the millimetre and what I'm actually seeing when I'm trying to line it up is I've got a piece here that I haven't ground down as much as I have over in that corner. So you've got to sort of allow for, for things like that as well but I am happy with that, that that is perfectly square. One final diagonal check. And I really only need to check one corner. We know what the measurement is now. It's 26.97. So as long as this one is 26.97, beautiful. We don't need to check the other one. We know that one is also going to be 26.97. Lovely. We have a square frame. Now we can start cutting, measuring and cutting our cross pieces. All right, so I've cut another couple of five mil spaces and the reason I need these is because I'm gonna go, the cross members are gonna be uh, 50 by 50 SHS. And I'll, I think I've got three or four of those, maybe three. And then on the very ends, I'm gonna go 50 by 50 angle sort of like that. And that's just gonna give me something to screw the timber to at the very ends of the tray with the angle. And then I'll screw to the SHS in the middle of the tray, like for the rest of the tray with those cross members. But the frame's 75 mil. So if I put the 50 mil flush with the bottom, that's gonna leave us a 25 mil lip at the top. The decking is 19 mil timber. So we put the 19 mil on, take 19 from 25. The, the lip's gonna be too big. I don't, I don't want a um, six mil lip. I want maybe two mil. I, I pretty much just want the radius of the steel to be the lip. So I'm going to prop the angle and the SHS cross members up off the bottom five mil using these spaces. I really should cut heaps of these. If I cut, otherwise I'm gonna be forever moving, clamping, moving, clamping. If I cut enough to just do the whole lot. All right, so I'm gonna cut more of these spaces. And once I've got half a dozen of these, uh, I'll measure and cut the two pieces of angle for the front and back. And then the three or four I think I want to go four because I want to put two in a position where the mud guards can bolt to them so that so they'll be centered over the tires for the mud guards and then the other two will just uh, even out the space between those two and the angles so anyway I'll get cutting I'll cut all those clean them all up and then I will measure where they're going to go clean up the paint off this steel where I'm gonna weld those in and uh, we'll, we'll pick it back up there, okay? All right, so I've changed my mind with these mud guards. Uh, they're a bit too far gone. They're in worse condition than I thought they were, so I'm not gonna worry about taking the other one off. I'm just gonna use this one to get some measurements so I can have the cross members in the right place and then I'll order some new mud guards.
Well, that's everything tacked in place for the bed. I'm gonna go and have some lunch and then I'll come back and I think I might tackle the rock sliders next. I might do a bit on the rock sliders and then we might get started on the headboard. So either, either we work on the headboard or I'll work on the mounting system and all the mounting brackets and the, the angle rail that I'm gonna put underneath and getting it actually positioned. I might do that actually before I start on the headboard. I'll make all the mounting brackets and I'll get this tray actually mounted in place exactly where it's gonna sit. And that way we know our measurements for the headboard are all gonna be correct. All right, I'll get back to you after lunch. All right, it's the next day. Let's cut some rock sliders for this thing. So that's the slider itself cut to length. They're gonna sit under the sill, under that uh, pinch seam, like that. And then I'll have a step coming off the side. But I need some thicker plate. Originally I bought some five mil, uh, sorry not plate, flat bar, five mil flat bar. But I'm just looking at it now thinking I'd, I'd like to go heavier. So I think I'm going to get six or eight mil, maybe even 10 mil. No, I'll go six. I'll keep this light duty. So I'll go six flat bar with the three mils, eight mil flat bar with the four mil and 10 mil flat bar with the five mil. So light, medium, heavy duty. I think that's how I'll, I'll run with it. So. I need to get some more 6mm flat bar to mount these and I need to get the custom U-bolts made up. So that'll be my next step because I'll actually get the bolts and the flat bar bolted to the chassis and then I'll have this jacked up into position and then I'll be able to make the, the mounting brackets or the cross members to suit that, this will be in correct position and the mounting plates will be in correct position and I'll be able to run the, the legs that way. So 
We'll leave the sliders for now until I get some flat bar and U-bolts. I'm gonna weld these sections here and then grind them flush because I wanna start on the headboard, which is gonna sit on top of that and I won't be able to access it later. So we'll weld that up and grind that flush now.
morning. So a little bit of an update. It's my last day before I have to go back to work. So I'll fill you in on where I'm up to and what we've got planned for today. I'll just turn this camera around and show you where we're at. So here's where we are at with the tray so far. Got the basic frame knocked up and it is sitting where it's going to sit. It's at the right height and uh, position in regards to the cab. Don't take any notice of that bar up there. That's just a reference. It will be the same as this 75 by 50 upright. I just sort of wanted to get my lines and just put that up there as a reference so I could see where I want the top of the headboard to sit. Uh, the sliders have been cut to length and end capped. Just got to clean those welds up, grind them off a bit, round them off. And I still need to get U-bolts made for those. I need to cut the mounting plates and drill the holes and all that sort of stuff. So I might organize those U-bolts while I'm at work and um, hopefully they'll be here when, I'm, when I get back. The bull bar's still outside here, waiting to get Raptor coated. I'm gonna leave that for now. I was contemplating knocking that over this break, but I'm just gonna wait until everything's ready to get Raptor coated, do it all in one hit. Save me having to clean the gun. And yeah, still waiting on parts. Everything's here basically except for the corner lamps. Still waiting on those. And the clips for the front grill. Uh, like I mentioned, they're coming from Thailand, so still waiting on those. But that's how she's looking at the moment. Today, I think I might try and get that top piece tacked in. So I'll take that bar down. I've marked the lines now. That's where I want it to sit. I want it to sit fairly low, like just above the cab. Um, hard to see looking at the sun, but that's the sort of line I'm looking for. So I'm going to take these back off they're just tacked on and cut the piece for the top put all that back on and then that's basically the tray done apart from the back here i've got to do a little bit on the back here for the um, license plate and the and the reverse light so i might try and knock that up today as well all right see how far we get
So as luck would have it, this piece across the top here, I need 1340 from uh, long point to long point, and my off cut is 1310. So it's too short. I'm gonna have to order some more steel. So that's where we'll stop with the headboard, this swing. Uh, I could do some more in here, but I wanna wait until I've got that top piece on uh, just in case it, it pulls it out of whack too much. So we'll leave the headboard, that's where, as far as we're gonna get this swing, and I'll move on to the back and I'll do the license plate and uh, tail light sort of section on the back here, and we'll get started on that now. guys I'm gonna leave it there uh, I started on the back sort of license plate section but I felt like I was rushing it and I wasn't uh, getting it how I wanted it to so I just gave up on that leave it until I've got more time and I don't have to rush and make mistakes and get it exactly how I want to so I'll turn this camera around I'll show you where we're at all right so I've got the rails tacked in uh, the, the mounting rails so the mounting brackets are gonna to bolt to the chassis and then be welded to the side of this angle. And that'll be the mounting system for the tray. So those, both those rails are just tacked in place. As I mentioned before, we still need to do the top of the headboard and then we'll put a piece in just under the window and probably some bracing and this whole deck will be timber and up until that cross member there will be timber as well. Uh, mud guards, I'm probably just gonna go and buy some off the shelf mud guards. First thing when I get back uh, after this next swing. So um, yeah, probably some along the lines of the Dun and Watson style mud guards for the back there. I'll see who makes them in Perth and, and chase up a set for when I get back. The rock sliders, the sliders themselves are cut to length and have six mil flat bar caps on the end. Just need to clean those up and get those mounted. I'll chase up the U-bolts for the chassis at the same time I'm chasing up the mud guards. Have all that stuff here by the time I get back. Hopefully too, the uh, corner lamps and the clips for the grill will be waiting for me when I get back. So theoretically, next swing we should be able to finish this uh, if I can pull my finger out 
on the tray, we should be able to get this finished. But yeah, that's where we're at. So I am gonna clean up some of this mess, clean up my bench, get the shop vac out and put some scrap steel away and try and tidy up a little bit. And then I've just got some work to do around the house before I fly out. So yeah, that's where we're gonna leave you. So as always guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to give the video a like and subscribe if you wanna see more and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.